Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out the Castle 360 EX all in one CPU cooler from Deepcool. Now, take note, this is actually part of a long series of videos I'm publishing on coolers, all of them high end, starting at $60, going up to nearly $200. And I've published a few previously. You can check those out in my channel. I'll link my most recent one right up here. But all those benchmarks are going to be in this review as well. Now, the Castle 360 EX is a cooler I featured on the channel previously. In fact, benchmarking against its 280 EX cousin, and they came out nearly identical, which is really interesting. But this series is definitely focused on 360 models, and this is what this one is. Now, this comes in around $140. Sometimes it's $130. So it gives you kind of a sense of the price range. Definitely a reasonably priced 360 millimeter all-in-one. Not the cheapest out there, but not the most expensive either. Now, this is actually branded as a GamerStorm model, but Deepcool has informed me that they're kind of retiring the GamerStorm name. So you may see different packaging and different marketing for this cooler in the future. It's still called the Castle 360EX. It's the same cooler, you just might not see the GamerStorm name. And this logo, in fact, on the fans is, I guess, kind of a stylized GS for GamerStorm. That may be going away in future versions, but the performance should be the same. Now, in terms of this cooler, it does have a really cool pump design with this mirror finish when it's off and then there's going to be some rgbs when you turn it on and i will show that to you when i have this installed in the system and then when i run the benchmarks you'll see how it performs so without further ado let me jump into the installation of this cooler and then you'll see how it does in the benchmarks versus the other 360 millimeter coolers that i've tested here's what you get in the box with the 360ex note that it's compatible with a wide variety of platforms from amd and intel i'll be using the amd am4 platform to make things easy for the user deep cool pre applies the thermal paste as you can see here although i will be taking it off because I'm doing an apples to apples comparison and using Nocto NTH2. Now here is the cooler fully assembled with the fans attached and the AM4 bracket mounted. Once I get it into the system, we can see it really looks fantastic. The well blended lighting effects make it look like a light pipe, but take note that it is dependent on motherboard software for its RGB effects. So you better check whether your motherboard supports it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it does have pretty long hoses, as you can see here. And I found that they did stick out a little bit and kind of hit the side of my computer case. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also note, you do need that ARGB header on your motherboard that's over here. It's a three pin, five volt. And then I'm also using two fan headers, one for the pump and one for the fans. A splitter is included, as you can see here. There's a little bit of tidying up that you'll need to do, but you don't have to worry about providing your own three-way splitter. Now, before we get into the benchmarks, I'll give you some audio samples of the fans at maximum and at 35 decibels. To control the fans, you can either use your motherboard software or an aftermarket software suite like Argus Monitor, which I used here. And now let's get into the benchmarks using my AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, which I lock at 4.2 GHz and 1.3 volts. At idle, it does very well on the Deepcool Castle 360EX, just 43 degrees. Now, I'm not that concerned about temperature at idle, but I do like very low noise, and 30 decibels is really good. That's despite some pretty high RPM fans, 540 RPM minimum on these fans, but they're pretty good overall. I would prefer if they could go down a little bit lower, but I don't think they'll bother anyone at that minimum RPM. Let's turn to our load tests. I'll start with CPU-Z with maximum RPM on all my coolers. Now, this is not the test that I think is really the one to focus on, but at maximum RPM, the Castle 360EX is clearly just a step or two behind the other liquid coolers, particularly Corsair H150i, which spins its fans at a much higher RPM and produces much lower temperatures. Perhaps even more problematic for deep cool here is that it's tied with the Noctua NHD15, which is an air cooler that costs significantly less. So, so far, I'm not that impressed, but let's move on to noise normalized tests. 
Once all these coolers are limited to 35 decibels from two feet, the Deep Cool Castle 360EX actually starts to look a lot better. It is tied with the Corsair H150i and ahead of the NHD15. But this is where the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 really comes into its own. Just 65 degrees at 35 decibels with the lowest VRM temp as well. It's a true winner here. But let's turn up the heat a little bit more by going to Cinebench R20. So I begin here again with maximum RPM tests, which is where most other CPU cooler tests end. And at this point, we see that the Deep Cool Castle 360EX is way behind the Corsair. And you may say, okay, that's it. It's not as good. But take note of those noise levels. It's a lot quieter than the Corsair. And yet it is also louder than the Arctic at the same temperature. So if I were to do a traditional review here, I'd say, hey, it's tied with the Arctic and it loses the Corsair. And it's just barely ahead of the Noctua NHD15. Let's now noise normalize these results and see how it really does play out. Things look a little bit different here, don't they? The Deep Cool Castle 360EX is actually ahead of the Corsair. It's just barely behind the Arctic and it does beat Noctua. So overall, this is a really good result. I think I would call this a winner over the more expensive Corsair model. And frankly, it's very, very close to Arctic, which is a good place to be given that you're getting something for around the same price and you have the element of RGB that Arctic won't give you. So overall, I was really impressed by the 360EX. That came as no surprise because I've actually tested it before versus its cousin, the 280EX. They have excellent fans. I really like the design, the look, and the performance of these fans. They never get too loud or too out of shape, which I really appreciate. You don't have to tune them out and say, gosh, that's way too loud at maximum RPM. What is going on? And then when I noise normalized them, they were very competitive. In fact, just beating out the H150i from Corsair. Just barely though, so they're really kind of on par when you consider the margin of error. But this is a bit cheaper, and I really love the design of this pump. I love the mirror finish when it's off, and when the RGB turns on, it's just so cool. It's the best looking RGB effect I've ever seen on a cooler. Now, in terms of the performance overall for the money, it is beaten by the Liquid Freezer 2 360. That one comes in about five or $10 cheaper, depending on the day. Of course, it's also out of stock almost all the time. So this one's typically around and you know you're getting very decent performance. And if you want that RGB effect, hey, you've got it right here. Arctic's not gonna give that to you. On the other hand, you may go for the Corsair just because it has the backing of that big company and the great warranty and customer service. But frankly, I really like this cooler. I like the 280EX that I've tested previously. I think Deep Cool is definitely onto something with its series of coolers coming up and matching or beating some of the big names out there. So there's definitely nothing wrong with going with this cooler. Again, I think it looks great. The performance is there and the price is right. So I'm gonna give this four and a half out of five stars, which is nearly my highest recommendation. Now, would I personally choose it over the Liquid Freezer 2 360? You know, I might do it if I didn't need top end performance on a noise normalized basis. I actually like the looks of this more because it's got the RGB effect. So do you want RGB or you want the best noise normalized results? I think they're both definitely valid. Now, if you have any questions about this video, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and gives me the incentive to do more videos like this in the future. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.